This conference will now be recorded. I pledge allegiance to the flag and the United States of America, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I would take a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. So moved. Oh, go ahead, Sean. Sean. Sean and Maggie. Sean made the motion, Maggie seconded it. And um, all in favor say aye. Jurek says aye. Sean? Aye. Rick? Aye. Bruce? Aye. And Maggie? Aye. Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Um, Main Street Reconstruction Project 2020-2021 CIP City Engineer Chris Cavett. Thank you, Mayor, and members of the City Council. Um, just kind of want to keep you uh, up to date on the project. Um, we're uh, beginning the third week. This is the first day of the third week of uh, of work, and as you can see, there's a lot going on out there. Um, last week, the uh, sanitary sewer was started down by Wells Fargo and brought all the way up to, I think they're somewhere between First Avenue Northeast and S Central Avenue, and probably get to Central by tomorrow. Uh, the water main crew, a second water main crew, came in and started uh, today, and they're working their way east, chasing chasing behind the sanitary sewer crew, working their way up. Um, and I think they're started some additional removals now. They're going to start picking up from First Avenue and start working the removals heading east over towards Columbus, but just shy of Columbus. So Columbus will be the main crossing left open uh, north-south across Main Street. Um, it will, and, and initially that's the way it'll be. And then once they get uh, um, utility work past uh, First Avenue Northeast, there may be a swap where they'll put a temporary surface at First Avenue and they can work on closing Columbus and keeping going on east from there. So again, First Avenue Northeast, that's where the old stoplight was or Columbus will be open at all time, one or the other. <clears throat> um, couple heads up items, um, or just, I guess we've, we've held a, uh, our weekly meetings, uh, held weekly meetings for business owners and property owners to call in for questions. And so far we really have had only, uh, I guess one individual um, call in a couple of weeks ago and nobody else uh, except for council member uh, Wolf, he did join us. Otherwise it's been pretty quiet so far. I don't know if that's good news. Um, we do have about 70 people that have signed up for the texting service. Um, so hopefully people are getting the word. A couple minor, or a couple things I do want to give you a heads up on because they will certainly be coming back your way, uh, inevitably looking at some change order items, some un unexpected things uh, that have come up. Uh, Ken, if you want to bring up that picture, I think this one's uh, kind of actually interesting, but it also has some in implications of some additional cost. Um, what you see on there is what they call the old steam lines. The uh, ran from the um, power station down at uh, Columbus up to um, right now, as far as we know, they're again, they're at Central Avenue. We did know there was, they were there. We didn't know it was as much as what was there. We knew there was, a, there was, we knew the steam lines would be asbestos wrapped and there'd be, have to be some asbestos abatement. Um, and cause we've dealt with these on some of the side streets over the years, but it was only involved pipes. In this case, it's in a, actually a, uh, a uh, I don't know what you even call it, like a tunnel a tunnel system that was built around it uh, to carry the pipes. And I just got the word this afternoon that the uh, abatement uh, consultant is basically quantifying the entire bank, the brick, the return pipe, as well as the asbestos coated pipe as, um, needing to be abated so it's increased the amount of volume and inevitably the contractor is going to submit a request for additional costs and it certainly is above and beyond what our what we had anticipated there for being there 
you're curious where this was, this was all under the curb line, basically on the south side of the road. So uh, the other thing um, that is going to have is appearing to have some cost implications, and we don't have all the answers just yet. I, I think many of you maybe have heard there's some concerns about uh, structural concerns about one of the buildings um, down near Central Avenue and Main Street, um, and we're in the process of having that evaluated there's another structural engineer that's taking a look at it now there's concerns about what uh, construction vibration may do to that building by some things that have been discovered here recently um it's uh, discussion is on how to do some of the backfilling the utility trench backfilling and reduce vibrations and some of that will have some additional cost implications again above and beyond what the uh, scope of the project was um, so again, those things will be coming back to you. Um, we're gonna certainly have to make some urgent decisions to keep uh, things from being delayed. Um, and we're involving the group, the entire group of uh, individuals, you know, Matt, Bruce, as well as the folks from MnDOT on uh, what is the proper decision on, on how to deal with this. I don't wanna get into a lot more details on that until we have uh, some more facts. But uh, I guess with that, uh, any questions or any comments and feedback any of you are getting from the public? Well, I'm not getting any feedback from the public, um, which may, like, to your point, is either good news or not. But um, a question about the uh, asbestos abatement. Will any of the dirt around it have to also be taken away? You know, so it's... Uh, I can't remember, it's like a, not a brown field, but there's an environmental term for it when you have to take away any contaminated soil. I think that happened over at Econo Foods when they were digging for the quick trip. So Yeah, so, so that that's kind of what's come up with this. Typically, yeah, you're taking a little bit of soil with it and it all, they, they have, again, they have an abatement contractor and abatement consultant. So professionals, that this is what, this is what they, um, their specialty is, is dealing with this. Um, so they they have to pick it apart, and as I'm understanding it, they're they're having to remove not only the obviously the asbestos coated pipe, but the return pipe, which is a second pipe that you can see in that picture, as well as the brick tile on either side, as well as the uh, the soils and and uh, foundation material. So it's ended up being a lot more material volume than was anticipated, and that will include a little bit of the soil around there. Okay. And then it's obviously taken to a landfill and there's a proper procedure on how it's documented and disposed of, so. Bruce. Chris, to follow up on that, is all of that cost gonna be borne by the city because it's a city service, a utility, and that will not be shared with MnDOT then? That is correct. That is completely 100% city cost. Okay. And then the same for the, the building uh, near Central that maybe has some stru structural integrity issues. Um, is that cost, additional cost of which we don't know, also borne by the city? Um, it'll be borne probably between, um, at, the way we would look at it is it'd be borne between the three utilities, Storm Sewer, which is MnDOT, Sanitary, which is the city, and Water, which is the city. And they may not be equal thirds, um, mm -hmm. but it would be some type of split probably between those three utilities. But yeah, the majority of the cost would, would go to the city. And what about the property owner? I don't think we know the answer to that. So I don't think I want to ask. We've asked the question. Um, Ken's had some discussions with Scott Riggs. Um, we we just don't know the answer to that. And we'll okay. be stuck. Something will be looked into. Yeah, we'll, we'll continue enough. to look into that, Maggie. Um, okay. We can get a good answer on that. Uh, the one other thing I wanted to note about that building, sorry to interrupt, uh, but specifically, um, I believe I wanted to point out that the uh, building owner has been cooperative and we understand that it's displaced some uh, tenants, at least partially out of the downtown sound building and fully out of the consignment lodge building. And um, we just wanna make sure that uh, the conditions are safe for anybody to re-enter the building. We did determine that last Thursday for um, the rear uh, portion of downtown sound so they could continue their lessons there. And um, if we can do so for any portion of the consent lodge building, we will do so, but not until conditions are safe. And that is in consultation with 
our structural engineer that we've um, relied on from SEH, as well as the uh, property owners, um, structural engineers. And as uh, Chris Cabot pointed out, we do have, um, or we were told that another structural engineer was coming out today to look at the building for some long-term solutions, as well as um, some shorter term solutions here um, to make it through the um, road construction project with again, you know, vibration being concerned for not just this building, but any any of the old buildings downtown here. So sure. uh, yeah, yeah. And I think the, the structural engineer was there today. I actually had to use the alley and there were a group of, you know, four to five gentlemen looking at the building and pointing and you know so yep. uh, I think there has has been some discussion well we'll sit, sit tight until we hear more yep exactly you know one we're going to hear more I don't want to put you on but how soon did structural engineers say they might have a report back well I we don't have an exact date I would I would hope within the next couple of days here that we would hear more um, so what they would do is prepare information and send that to um, Chad Lunder, our building official, and then we'll uh, consult with our structural engineer, um, kind of concur with what we're reading in the report. And again, it's all in the name of um, safety and the occupants of the yep. building. Um, I guess until we know more, we'll, we'll give you an update when we when we have that. But we're uh, we're all working dig diligently to get that uh, resolved, uh, hopefully sooner than later. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? for Chris or Ken. If there are none, um, I'll move on to item two. Award the award of the 2021 street and parking lot seal coating quote. Matt? Turn your sound on, Matt. That might help. I apologize. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, let's start that over again. Uh, Mayor, City Council, in front of you is the street and parking lot seal coating bids. Uh, we received two bids this year uh, Allied Black Topping at $1.04 per square yard in Pearson Brothers at 99 cents. Seal coating uh, consists of applying the hot emulsion asphalt. Is uh, immediately covered up by a granule. Uh, seal coating is a preventive maintenance program that is designed to extend the life of the streets. Uh, the public works this year budgeted 135,000 in the 2021 street budget, with 99 cents per square yard. It came up to be $128,543.58. With that, uh, we also have in the 2019 CFP budget. Uh, we budgeted uh, for all the streets to be seal coated, and that money was put away in that account. We have $218,000 in that account as of today. This year is seal coating for the 2019 CIP. We are looking at $68,067.45. Uh, what still will be coming out of that account would be what we call the old County Road 37. It also is um, 7th Street Northeast and 7th Street Northwest. That is not going to be done this year because that is kind of a, uh, for the residents, we kind of use that as a, with Main Street being closed, a detour route. They want to have all that extra congestion going on. Uh, so we're going to push that back until next year. So for a total uh, seal coating this year between the 2001 uh, street budget and the 2019 CIP, the total of $192,630.87. We noted that Pearson Brothers has done it in New Prague since 2003. They've done it every year besides 2017 and 2021 Allied Blacktop is the low bid. That is a, it's the staff's recommendation that uh, the low bid Pearson Brothers at 99 cents per square yard for a total of $196,630. Um, be rewarded the bid. Please let me know. Hey, any questions? Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to accept the bid from uh, Pearson Brothers at 99 cents. I'll make a quick a question. Go oh, ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Bruce. Matt, 
but to 2019 CIP, then I'm assuming by what you said, there's more than enough to cover. And do you remember what the estimate was in the 2019 CIP for this? Are we at the budget or below it then? We should be below it. Uh, don't get me wrong, 30, old 37, don't have the square yards in front of me, but that's probably going to be right around that $100,000 mark, it would be my guess as of right now. And so then is the 128,543,58 plus the 68,67,45 supposed to add up to the 196,630,83? That is correct. That is the total between the two. And does it? Last week when I did the memo. Yep. Okay, thank you. I'll make the motion okay. to approve you. Go ahead. Nope, go ahead, Rick. I was just gonna ask that. We'll move. Okay. Rick makes a motion to approve the bid for Pearson Brothers. Is there a second? I'll second. Rick made the motion, seconded by Sean. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I vote aye. Um, Sean? Aye. Rick? Aye. Bruce? Aye. And Maggie? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, the next item, number three, promotion of Jeff Steinoff to maintenance worker. Uh, Matt? Yep. Mayor, City Council, uh, again, um, we are looking at promoting Jeff Steinoff to from maintenance work to the street water operator position 50 50. Uh, as of right now, as of uh, right now, Frank Bezik has taken the water operator position as a full time position, and he has been in that position for eight years. On March 18th, uh, the city slash utilities internally posted the position, and we received two applicants. On completing uh, the interviews, staff uh, recommended that the Jeff Stein be promoted from maintenance worker to street slash water operator position. Mr. Steinoff has been with the street for 14 years. Uh, in his time, he has been working with uh, doing uh, mapping, fixing water main breaks, exercising valves, locates, hydrant repairs uh, to prepare him for this position. Uh, Mr. Steinoff. Will be required to re sorry, Mr. Steinoff will be required to get a Class D water license within uh, two years of the date of his hiring. Um, he will be starting position or starting pay would be pay grade six, step seven, uh, effective June first. That gives us time to backfill his position. Uh, it is staff recommendation that. Utility Commission and also City, uh, City Hall, City Council uh, approves the promotion of Jeff Steinoff to the Water Street position. So what was he before then, Matt? He was a full-time street public worker. Yeah. Okay. Any discussion? Otherwise, I'd take a motion to approve the, prom the promotion of Jeff Steinoff to maintenance city street water operator position. <laughs> so moved. Okay. Uh -huh. Maggie's moved and Rick seconded it. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, Jerick votes aye. Sean? Aye. Rick? Aye. Bruce? Aye. And Maggie? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, 
I think Mike would have talked about this a little bit, but uh, I think between me and maybe Ken, we can iron this out. Um, to establish um, interval uh, dates for the commission candidates um, prior to the terms, everybody, or prior to the other terms expiring, everybody has that in their packets. Um, we were hoping to do these in person. Is everybody comfortable with that? We figured that we could set up the council chambers to to accommodate that with the candidate. Is everybody okay with that? I am. I'm comfortable am. with that. I wonder if we should give the candidates the option though. Oh, there you go. I, I, I think they might ask them. That's kind of the understanding I was under. Okay. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna bring up um, later in the meeting um, that we uh, are nearly finished with our new AV system in the council room. So certainly could have all of you in person, and then if certain candidates want to uh, do it remotely, we could do that. So okay. Sounds like a plan. Now, with the calendar in front of you in April and May, what what dates will work for you if you'd want to do it all in one night? It would be about three and a half hours, I think, four hours. And when would you like to start? Well, I suggest that we split it up into two nights. I okay. I think three and a half to four hours, you know, start even at starting at five gets to be a long day for everybody. Um, we'd also have to accommodate the candidate schedules too. So. Yes. So um, I will have to say that the only day that I cannot do it is May 4th. Okay. Anybody else? I'll be out of town. I think the 28th, 29th, and 30th of April, and then again May 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th, and 11th. I'll be out of town. So far, the fifth and the sixth look good, then, huh? Well, we also have the third, you know, any of those third, Thursdays or, or possibly Fridays. I don't know if anyone wants to do them on a Friday, but um, I would suggest maybe a couple in one week and a couple in, in the, you know, one session, one week and one session, another week. Again, if that works for the candidates. So you're thinking like the 6th and the 13th? Yeah. I'm good Does with that, that work? Don? I'm looking right now. Okay. I can do the six. And I don't necess necessarily have to be there. I mean, there's almost the perfect numbers. We're, uh, we need three on the park board and there's three people that have applied. We need one youth. And one is applied. Really, it's going to come down to one person that applied for the golf board and one person that applied for the utilities will not get it. So, yeah. So, if you guys want to do the 13th, it's my daughter's birthday, so I'm not. Oh, oh. yeah. And we can we can work around it. What about the 12th? Um, the 12th, I'm okay. Any of those first few days, the 10th, 11th, or 12th? Because like that EDA, that's a morning meeting. Right. So so um, the park board would be the evening, right? The rest of them all would right. be evenings. So So if you went the 6th and the 12th, and then what time you want to have it at? And Bruce, are you okay with that? 
I yeah. think so, yes. Yep. Okay. Um, I guess I would like to start them sooner than later. So we're five not there. Well, five or 5.30, you know. So what, 5.30 yeah, on the 6th and the 12th? I think so. Let's do 5.30 on the 6th and the 12th. We're all okay. good with that? If that's okay with everybody. Yep. yep. You want to try to go to a couple hours each time or? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And then hopefully we can even it out for, for uh, you know, for everybody and work. We usually limit the interviews to 15 minutes. So yeah, should we that's perfect. Perfect. You got that, Ken? Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. And then um, let's see here. Review of information, a city administrator search process. Lisa? There she is. Good evening, Mayor Jerk, members of the council. It's great to be here with you tonight. Um, tonight's steps will allow us to begin our advertising efforts tomorrow. So we'll uh, get a good start on all the, the approvals here tonight. Um, just to provide a little background, as you know, the last several weeks I've been doing a lot of information gathering. So I got to spend a couple of days in your community and got to meet with each of you, as well as your, um, your leadership team and uh, the director from the chamber. And then we also solicited information from staff. So they provide us with some really great background information regarding the organizational structure, the budget, provided some really great photos that we were able to use in this profile. So this was a team effort, that's for sure. So I guess the first item of business tonight is just to uh, walk through the profile if you feel that is appropriate and look for any changes that you feel are appropriate. We want to make sure that this is a accurate portrayal of the community and the organization. And so with your changes tonight, that will ensure that we do. This document was circulated among the leadership staff. So they provided some really great um, noted changes, uh, whether it's correcting some grammar usage or correcting um, names of certain facilities or who, you know, under which jurisdiction some of these properties may be located in. So we noted those changes throughout, and I guess I am looking for any other further changes that you may have. And as I promised, I have my red pen with me tonight, so I'm ready to go. Uh, well, if you don't mind, I, I do have a few um, that I would just like to throw out there. Yep. So this would be on, um, not the cover page, but the first page in the second column okay. uh, where we're talking about some of the amenities. Um, you know, it's Coburn's and Hy-Vee and two quick trip stores. I'm just wondering if maybe we could uh, throw in something other than just retail you know, as, as far as amenities. Um, you know, we've, uh, or, or, or even do like, you know, the, the auto dealership or some something else so that it, it doesn't sound as if we're just uh, grocery stores and gas stations. Yes, that's a great, great change. Yes. So um, maybe, maybe chart a national or international company. Is yep. that in here? No, I didn't do that. So yeah, if we could maybe highlight, you know, some of our major uh, employers. Chart and Scott Equipment. Yeah. Electromed. Electromed, yes. Because they're all international companies. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the other um, item that I had highlighted for me again is in that second column in the second paragraph. Um, it's Kind of midway, it says the city of New Prague and MnDOT are cooperatively planning the highly anticipated multi-year reconstruction. Well, we're, we're in the throes of it, so maybe we can make that you know sound as if this is underway, um, and that we're the sidewalks are actually being replaced. They're not being improved, but 
maybe that word improvement is the fact because they are being replaced. So um, however you may want to word that, uh, if you want to make a change. Then in that same column two, the third paragraph, maybe I'm missing something, but it seems like the very last sentence is missing a finish to it. A downtown clock park it is in the plans for completion with the MnDOT reconstruction project through and then oh, yeah. more. Yes, I made note of that as well. So oh. yes, we will take care of that. And then to go back on your comment from that mid paragraph, how about changing it? And staff member had recommended this change as well. The city of New Prague and um, the MnDOT or MnDOT are cooperatively completing a multi-year reconstruction project. Does that sound better? Yeah, yep, I like that. Um, same, same page, third column at the very top, it says locals and visitors enjoy the next chapter winery as a destination boutique winery. I, I don't know what the context there is or if that was something that should have been struck. I have a feeling it's a continuation from the sentence that didn't get finished on that bottom second column. So we will fix that. And then I also received a suggestion that we should also add uh, Geisenbrau Beer Company is also very popular, which is located in city limits. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Um, third column, second paragraph, the community celebrates the construction of a new fire station and the wastewater treatment plant. Um, and they're not new, so um, maybe yeah, that's that's been a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, we can say that we have, you know newer newer facilities or i like to just say a 30 million dollar wastewater treatment plant so that in and of itself is is very complimentary um still in that same paragraph the industrial park with seven shovel ready lots um maybe that's just my bent but i can't stand that term <laughs> excuse me maggie this is mike on the phone oh hi, hi mike. You know, I couldn't connect in through the internet, so I apologize, but I am connected in uh, by way of a uh, telephone, so I'll do my best not to uh, interrupt. But that terminology, maybe is state-specific, and uh, it's a special program that the state of Minnesota has, and various communities are determined on how far and successful they are in preparations for industrial development by their designation as being shovel ready. Okay, fair, fair enough. It's just it's just a personal um, thing with me. I just, so no big deal. Um, so third paragraph or third column, last paragraph. Um, I don't know if we want to say the Chamber of Commerce so that it's clear what chamber sure. we're referring to. Um, and on the third page, so this has the pictures of the park and the aquatic facility. Um, first paragraph, first column, toward the bottom, we don't have a municipal pool any longer. Okay. That's been closed. First column, correct. yeah, first column, last paragraph. Um, so the Olympic size swimming pool is used for training for competitive dive and swim teams. Maybe we could squeeze in there swim lessons as well. Um, it has a, a broader use um, as, you know, as well as open swim. And um, I, let's see if I had anything else. Those are all the changes that I had noted. <clears throat> Wonderful. Thank you. Ken, this is Mike. Did uh, Maggie get, the, or excuse me, did uh, Liza get the comments from the city attorney and myself? Yes. Yes. Yes, I did. Thank you. Okay. Is 
Does anybody have any other additions or corrections or? I had uh, a question about. Go ahead, Bruce. Okay. On the organization page, it's the second or third sentence. The city has been well known for having a very stable and conservative council. We're conservative is kind of a political term, so I wonder, I'm not sure what is what was intended to be meant there. It was in relation to how you're very responsible with your budget and your spending. So, so could we put physical, uh, very stable and fiscally responsible council? You bet. I'm not sure if this is an issue important at all, but uh, we do have that relationship with the Cedar Lake uh, wastewater and sewer. Uh, if that needs to be put into either the organizational structure or anything or mentioned. That was the relationship with the Cedar Lake. I'm sorry, I can't hear what that was. Yeah, I can't hear you, Mike. Uh -oh. no, it is a contract relationship, but we're required to be uh, on their board, so we're actually a board member as well. So, Did anybody get that icon? No, no I no, couldn't. Could you know that that was a question, Mike, and um, um, look into that, and if if appropriate, add it to it? Yes, we can. There Thank we you. go. Now we can. Okay. Okay, so I will wait for an email with clarification regarding the relationship with Cedar Lake. Is that what I heard? Cedar Lake Sanitary District, I think its title is. Yeah. Sanitary Sewer District, yep. The uh, administration administrator goals and priorities page. Mm -hmm. The first column, sixth bullet point referring to the ambulance contract. Uh, I'm not sure the wording is really appropriate. It's not review. We actually agreed to put that on a bid, so it's actually. Um, I'm not sure if the wording is right there. It's actual something that we need to do. So it's not a decision if we're going to do it or not. It is a bidding process that has to take place next, either sometime the end of this year, beginning of next year. So would it be bid out the ambulance contract instead of review? I, I'm not sure if we use that word when we re renew the contract. But bidding would be, I guess, appropriate in my mind. But Bruce, you are correct. That would be bid out in the third year of the contract. And we agreed to do it at least a year ahead of time to allow a year if it changed over. So I think that puts us at the beginning of next year. So it's something that the new person would have to be involved in fairly quick. I think those are the only items I have. Okay. Any other changes? Like, um, yeah. Mike, go ahead. This is Mike uh, under the library director. Um, that should be Scott County library director. 
Yes, I received a noted change today from staff, so I will add Scott County above the words library director with a dotted line um, reaching up to instead of a straight line. Also, as well as the golf manager, we'll change that to golf manager and then contract will be in parentheses. And then I received um, some feedback about adding some dotted lines that would kind of show where the relationship is between the utility general manager and the utilities commission, the economic development authority and the city administrator, and then the housing and redevelopment authority with the city administrator. Well, all right, if there are, I can take changes all the way up until first thing tomorrow morning. Otherwise we will make these changes and we will get started advertising with this. So if that's no, if there's no other changes, we could move on to the next item of business if you're ready. Yes, if everybody doesn't have any other changes. Go ahead, Lisa. All right, so the proposed salary range that was provided to me from staff is $108,222 to $134,451. Now, in my memo to the council, I did misspeak. I had thought this information had come from your recent work with Abdo Eichenmeyers on your compensation classification study, but I was incorrect in doing that. However, still in reviewing the League of Minnesota Cities 2021 salary survey information, you are exactly right in alignment with communities comparable in population. So I feel that your range is very attractive and is spot on with other communities. So I just wanted to simply point that out. And again, with council's approvals tonight, that is the range that we will be using for the advertisement. So, Any questions? yeah, how did, I know you looked at the League of Minnesota Cities, but does that fall into our comp study? I'd have Will to it? defer to Mike for that. Mike? Hello. Dwayne, this is right out of the city's current compensation plan. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay. All right. Then next for review and approval is just the review of the job description. So I took a look at it. It was very thorough. I was talking to administrator Mike Johnson regarding this, and I think the only noted areas that I felt could potentially be tweaked. And I know Administrator Mike Johnson and I had a really good conversation about this and both, both of us see it two different ways. But as you look on the front page under essential functions, the fourth item that talks about the city's executive or economic development executive director, my only concern was this um, by re making it a requirement that your candidates must have um, experience in economic development could potentially limit your pool of candidates. So I had played with some wording in as a way to allow for some accommodation there. Um, you could change the wording to something to the effect of provides administrative support to the economic development, um, the EDA. Otherwise, um, and then make it a desired quali or preferred qualification versus a actual requirement. And I know Administrator Mike Johnson, looks like he may not be on the call anymore. He just talked about how he, when he was hired for the position, he came with economic development experience and that led to um, you know, his work in working in economic development. So, I only threw it out there as an option. Um, certainly economic development is not a full-time part of this job. I'm just concerned about when I look at current candidates that I see on the market, you know, 
there's many that do not have the experience at all whatsoever. So I don't know if there's any look into the future as far as whether you would bring somebody on with economic development experience that could provide that specific role and the city administrator would still oversee and make sure that they're that the city is providing the proper support for this this organization or what have you so simply just bringing this to your attention but i look forward to hearing your discussion regarding this and then on the back page i was I made a simply a suggestion of adding a section called preferred qualifications and under there we would list again community economic development and then experience working with an electric utility and experience working with a municipal golf course so those are my only two proposed changes but i look forward to hearing what you have. Liza, I'm fine with both of those changes. Yeah, I, I am too. Um, you know, since it seems to be a unique situation that Mike came with that economic De development authority background that he would fall into that role. Um, and and Dwayne, you you sit on that that board and do you feel that just administrative support would be needed and otherwise the members are able to move forward with um, some of what's in place already with you know first stop shop and that sort of thing um i didn't make the last meeting because i okay. got i got called into work um so bruce was there and i know that it came up as a discussion point um bruce what 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 did they discuss about that because i know that there was a list with other cities um other cities what they do basically a lot of the cities around us it is the city administrator that holds that position well i might not get the detail of what was uh the end result of it but i think there was a consensus that the city administrator would need to be involved I think whenever we're working on EDA issues or something happening or we're looking at a business expansion or a new business, you really have to marshal your forces very quickly. So in a small town, a smaller town like ours, our, I believe our city administrator has to be involved in some level automatically. Now, whether that person has in-depth economic development uh, credentials I, I you know that's become a specialty area now and that's why you're not seeing it so much EDA there's all sorts of EDA technicians coordinators supervise it's a very technical it's become a you know a, a, a individual position in itself but so even if we would delegate some of those duties some other way I can't imagine the city administrator not being involved in it yeah. And when we're looking at EDA experience, I don't look at the city administrator having a Bachelor of Arts in EDA necessarily, but any city administrator that's involved in any city that I'm aware of has had some background in EDA issues. They just have to. So mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine that we wouldn't, we, we would find someone unless it's from a other agency or coming from a different totally different background than city governor governance not having some level of um, experience in EDA issues so I I think we, we might we don't want to dissuade anybody because it, I guess is what I would look at it I'm I'm comfortable with keeping it as a separate item I think it's something we'd certainly desire now, what we would desire is maybe not a fully experienced person as Mike might have been in that area, but certainly someone with some some experience in some way. I mean, it, every city is dealing with economic issues by virtue of being a city. So um, we're not looking for we're not looking for someone with a master's in. E economic development is what I'm saying. Yeah. Wouldn't that be part of the interview process though, Bruce, that we could 
still get all the good candidates that we don't want to, like you even said, didn't want to dissuade anybody. Um, but couldn't that be a plus in our interview process with them and then ask them what their feelings is on EDA and if they have any type of experience and then weed them out from there if or determine what degree they have and maybe we're okay with that? I totally agree. We're not going to find someone with a utilities background, with an EDA background, who ran a fitness center and golfs every day. We're not going to find that person. So there's going to be holes and weaknesses and strengths and things like that. So I don't think we want to set it up. And, and so I, I would agree with Lisa's uh, set, putting this to the side as having more desired attributes that we're looking for and include those items in there and then we can make a decision you know someone might be very strong financially but we can never supervision or something you know right so are you suggesting that we take it out of the essential functions and then just put it in the desired attributes i would actually recommend keeping it under essential functions but instead of it stating serves as the economic development executive director consults with it i would change it more into provides support provides administrative support because i agree with um, council member wolf i mean the city administrator has to help move these processes along quickly so even just being the support person who if they don't know the answers find somebody that does find a resource so that you can determine well how do you offer um TIF, if that's something, or any incentive package in order to um, encourage the expansion of a current business or attracting a new business to the community. So I, I think we can, it still needs to be in there as an essential function, um, but I do, I like turning it into a preferred qualification. And yes, you are right in the interview questions. I will have a question in there specifically asking, you know, what type of experience that they had in bringing housing expansion or business expansion into their communities that they've served. Okay. Mayor Jerry. I'm good with yes. that approach. Yeah, Mike. This is, this is Mike. Uh, before you totally pass on this one, uh, one piece that is not in there is that from a legal standpoint in being able to sign off on legal documents for both the EDA and the HRA, the HRA isn't in here and that's probably my fault when we wrote this, we didn't get that in there, but I've served as the executive director for both the EDA and the HRA and that's necessary when it comes to executing documents on behalf of both of those two entities. The council serves as the HRA and you've got the separate EDA, but from a legal standpoint, I've signed off on documents uh, and different things uh, associated with that uh, as the executive director under both of those two entities. Okay. So I don't think you want to give that up or to to push that aside because that formality is needed uh, as we operate under both the EDA and uh, the HRA. Okay. So you can take away what you want necessarily done from a duty standpoint, but you still need to have for execution purposes, when it comes to signing documents with EDA, it's the president of the EDA and the executive director. When it comes to the HRA, um, it's the president of the HRA, which has typically been the mayor uh, or somebody else elected by the council, and then myself as the executive director of the HRA. So you don't want to give up not having those execution because Nobody else on staff has that signing authority. Thanks, Mike. Okay, any other thoughts?
So the job Liza description. Liza had a good suggestion. Liza had yep. a good suggestion on how to rewrite it, but somehow you still need to weave into that that yep. at least from document execution and authority that way, this position needs to be able to be a signer for both of those two city entities. So Liza, is that something you want to draft some language and maybe send it to us in an email just, just for a set of eyes? Yes, yes certainly. Okay. Because I was thinking that you wanted to get this out tomorrow. And I do. So is, I guess. Can everybody get back like to Liza whether it's good or not or when she sends that to us? I'm good with it right now, Liza. And I can also loop in Administrator Johnson as well, just to take a peek at the words. But I yeah. can see some modifying it to still providing administrative support and serving as a signatory on EDA and Very HRA good. matters on behalf of the city. Yep. That sounds good. And I assume that most people applying for this position know what those acronyms mean? Yes. Okay, good. If they don't, then... <laughs> <laughs> you bet. All right, wonderful. I will send an email to Administrator Johnson. We'll just finalize or tweak that wording and so that we can make those proper changes tomorrow. And then these changes will also be reflected in the profile as well. So it will all be all matching succinct. All right. Is there any other conversation about the job description before we talk about the schedule? I don't have any. Anybody else? Go ahead, Lee. Oh, go ahead, Maggie. No, I said I'm good. Oh, I'm sorry. I think you I didn't hear it all. Okay. Um, go ahead with your schedule. Sure. So this schedule has been modified per the request of the city council at our last meeting. We wanted to kind of shorten up the timeline here so we can properly get somebody in the office by early August before Administrator Johnson departs the office. So in your packet, you found a copy of the schedule. There are yellow highlighted dates. Those are which would require your participation. So the next time we would meet would be on June 7th where you'll be selecting your finalists. It'll be important for you to be there because you will each individually uh, voting for who you're interested in meeting and then we'll, we'll go through the process and select your finalists as a group. And then your interviews, um, I have a proposed date of June 29th that would obviously require your participation as well. The approval of these dates would also be in the advertisement so our finalists know that they need to set us dates. They'll also know that I'll be calling them on the eve of June 7th to let them know where they stand as far as the status of this process. So I just want to make sure that you took a look at your calendars and you are uh, going to be attending or at these meetings and then these will be in the profile in the advertisement. I don't have any conflicts. I don't either. I'm okay. Sean's okay, Liza. Rick. I oh, go ahead, Bruce. Liza, the uh, June 29th, is that meant to be a during the day? Um, is That's that where question. we are? We have the opportunity to interview individually. Yep. So when I come back before you on June seventh, you as a group will help me, you know, draft what your interview day will look like. I'll throw out a few ideas in my next memo to you. Actually, in the memo that you did receive last week, there were a few items in there, so we can touch on that likely tonight. But I mean, this day can be as expansive or as abbreviated as you would like. Um, typically, well, the most important uh, 
part of this process will be your formal panel interview. So each of all of the council members will be sitting down in the council chambers and, and spending 45 minutes with each of the candidates. But you have the option to include a city tour, um, lunch or in interviews with your leadership staff, uh, a community meet and greet event. Um, as I mentioned, you can get as crazy or you can get as um, simplified as you would like. But yes, typically your involvement would take place in the day during the day. Okay. And June 29th is what you're speaking of. Yes, if that works for you. We have some flexibility. I have my schedule open so we can explore a few other dates if there's something else that you would prefer. And just to verify, you're looking at, so our availability would be most, we would need to be there most of the day then. The whole day. Correct. As of right now, yes. Okay. Until we finalize what that schedule looks like. Yeah. Let me take a look at my work calendar before I commit here. I should have done that prior. I apologize. In no June 7th, I'm sorry, June 7th is going to be taking place at a normal city council meeting then. Is that correct? Yes. June 29th is a Tuesday. Yes. So, and depending on the anticipation start time, um, it looks like I'm good. Why is it, hi, this is Mike asking yep. a question. It, or, or for Dwayne, is, is is there a reason that you're not doing this uh, on a Saturday for the benefit of the council in the process? I guess I never asked that. We did do it previous on a Saturday um, uh, but when we hired you. Um, I guess, um, Lisa, you know, I mean, if people would be open on a Saturday, we could definitely do it on a Saturday. Did that the last time. The Saturdays in June are pretty full. Yeah. I was just going to say that. I think the last time we had a lot more, we had a lot more people that were working um had more of a schedule um and, and it was determined you know determined for a saturday that time um i can make it work on my calendar um you know so yeah i you know i can make it work on mine too again if i could maybe even just work part of the morning on that day um and then I can take some time off. So, John, does that work for you? Yep. Yeah, that, I'm fine with the 29th. Okay. I am also. Okay, Rick, is that okay for you? Yeah, that's fine with me. I'm semi-retired. Do whatever you want. I'll catch up. I'm sure. No, I'm semi-retired by then too. I hopefully will have a month left. So, um. So, hey, Dwayne. Um, yeah, go ahead, Mike. This is Mike. That uh, the last time when you did do my interviews, you had individual interviews with each council member, and then you had a group interview after that. Yes, that's how we did it. Whether you and still want to do that or not, I'm just that's what you did when I was hired. And I think everybody, are you comfortable with doing individuals? Well, maybe what we can do is kind of talk about how that day will be structured, um, you know, and, and lock it down at one of another of our council okay. meetings. So maybe the June 7th meeting or something. Um, I'd really like to take a look at the candidates that come forth and, and then try to think through maybe the best way to interview them. Okay. Sounds good. So then let's do it for the 29th. Okay, sounds wonderful. June 7th and June 29th will be in, 
in the advertisement then. And then one week prior to the June 7th meeting, so starting this week, now that we're going to begin advertising, let me back up a little bit. I will now send weekly updates to each of you council members so that you know where we're at in the process. So this, for instance, this week, I'll send you a list of all the different um, venues of where we're advertising so you can follow along. And then each week I'll provide uh, numbers or trends on how many numbers I'm seeing in your candidates. If I see that, I don't know, that we have it. A certain number coming from out of state I'll share that I mean I'll give you more information you probably even care for but you'll have the information and it's also an open invitation for you to always reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns then one week prior to the June 7th meeting that you'll want to make sure that you look for that email in there you'll receive clickable links to each of the semi-finalists so I will whittle down a the candidates after the position closes, whittle it down to a reasonable number of semi-finalists. And in the comfort of your home, you'll be able to review their cover letter, resume, their video interview responses, and then their work personality strengths. And then we'll all come together on June 7th. I'll ask for you to select your top three or four that each of you are looking forward to getting to know, and then we'll determine from that point who we should invite for interviews. So I will remind you of that date. So just watch for that in my weekly updates that I provide you. You'll get a similar email one week prior to your final interviews, again, containing a plethora of information about each of your finalists. So you know pretty much everything there is to know. Well, maybe not everything, but a lot about your finalists before you sit down and meet with them face to face. And then at that June 7th meeting, I'll also provide ideas on, on some of the activities that you can participate in in your uh, interview process. So that'll be some good discussion that evening. Other than that, that's everything that I have. Now, do you need a motion um, to approve your, what is this here? The profile, given all the changes. Uh, given yes. all the changes and then that, what else did I see? Um, uh, hang on. The back of your letter where you stated those four. Yes. So we. Mm -hmm. Can we do that all in one motion? You certainly can. Somebody, would somebody be willing to offer that motion um, to approve the position? Profile, so salary moved. range, job description, and timeline. So moved. Okay, Rick's made a motion to approve that. Is there a second? I'll second. Sean seconded it. Is there any other discussion? Now remember, if somebody has something that all of a sudden they see and they got a question on, please bring it forward because we can can still change it. So, okay. Hearing no other discussion, I vote aye. Sean? Aye. Rick? Aye. Bruce? Aye. And Maggie? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Great. Um, thanks, Lisa. Do you have yes, any other questions everyone. for us? I do not, but thank you everybody for your attention tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, everybody has saw the consent agenda. I would take a motion to approve. So moved. Rick makes a motion. I'll second it. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Jerry votes aye. Sean? Aye. Rick? Aye. Bruce? Aye. And Maggie? Aye. Okay. Now we're into miscellaneous. Does anybody have any miscellaneous to bring up? I have a, a few things if I could ask them. Absolutely, go ahead. I'm not sure if Mike can hear or not, but I'm just wondering the status of the compensation study and when we're, are we 
where we are at with following up with that uh, presentation. I can hear Bruce. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. The uh, we uh, have been working with uh, um, Leah, uh, Leah from Amplified uh, Buyers. Uh, uh, you're cutting out. You're cutting out now, Mike. I, I'm doing the best I can. I I know I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we developed a rework of the line work position. And we're going to have the utility board to determine who the time is and then to get that to the council for that meeting. You didn't get any of that. Hey, Dwayne, I can yeah. maybe help with, I can help with that a little bit. So up um to your to your question there, Bruce. Um we've been wor working with Leah Davis on that. She's made those changes that uh and suggestions that the council and commission came up with when we met. Um, so I'll bring that presentation to the Utilities Commission next week, Monday, and then um, it is my anticipation that the Utilities Commission will forward that recommendation on to the City Council for your next meeting to have discussion on that topic. And we think we've come to a, a good solution to solve our issues. So she came up with some really good ideas and everything checks out good in regards to the um, comp worth study and comparable worth. So. I, um, I think we all have some good results to share with the council and the commission. Okay. And then, uh, uh, Police Chief Jim, um, I'm just wondering if you're there. I am. Um, the dash cams, I see that you paid for them, I think. Uh, part of them, yeah, the equipment that we got, we paid for. And okay. uh, installation is supposed to be the first week of May. We are scheduled okay. for. Do we need to adjust adjust the policy that you per, uh, created, or does the policy we approved already include the dash cams? Um, it doesn't specifically include the dash cams. I will I will add additional policy to cover the dash cams, but the the data collected by it um, is classified the same as a body cam. So we'll include that into that policy then. Okay, I remember there being discussion about turning them on and things, and I, I didn't know if we're gonna revisit that before you actually make them operational or not, or if that's already been determined or we're, we're comfortable with all that. No, I'll, I'll review uh, a policy in the next couple weeks and then bring that to probably the next council meeting also. Okay, and then I think lastly, I might as well hit everybody here. Ken, um, a couple months ago, I know Mike gave us an update about the South Side Park and getting plans and specs. And I'm just wondering the status of that. And then what's more in, I'm wondering about is the, the timing of it. Are we shutting down that park this summer or is it going to be a fall project or kind of what's the uh, status of that now? So I can give you a quick update on that. So Chris Cavett had his crew doing um, some minor survey work in the past two weeks uh, to collect obviously existing conditions just to compare what we collected uh, about three, four years ago when we put together initial uh, concept plans. Um, we did not have any team reserve that field for the summer. And that had kind of been the trend um, just due to the wetness of it the past few years. So. Um, I think we're going to actually put it out there so work could really start at any point uh, because we don't have any committed teams using that field and the goal is to have it really established uh, for grass um, as soon as they're they're done and likely we wouldn't have any team reservations for that field until spring of 2022 um, but we want to leave it a little flexible just so we can get a good price on it too so I don't have a great answer but um, we're leaving it a little open on uh, when a contractor could start on it just to see if we can uh, get a better price. So um, we're not really we're not really shutting it down for anybody that was relying on it is the important thing to know. Okay. And then just to follow up on that armory property, is that totally done now? Is that seated in that or is anything else going to happen there? No, that is completely done. Uh, they seated it and two weeks ago. 
And the tree is staying there then? As of right now, it is, yep. That can be removed uh, uh, if we feel necessary to fit more room for soccer fields, across whatever. I suppose you can bend a soccer ball around it, can't you, when you hit it? <laughs> Good players, Ken. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just parlaying off that question of Bruce's, didn't we discuss a survey? I mean, weren't they going to try to flatten that out yet this year or do some kind of work or at least get a survey on what that would cost? If you remember, we had uh, Chris Cabot provide from their landscape architect, uh, I think it's quote of about $60,000 to okay. uh, you know, do further work to make it you know, a nice flat field, but that had not been committed to at this point. Okay. Wow. Interesting. And, and I have one, I'm sorry, go ahead, Maggie. Bruce, did you have any other questions? No, I'm good. Okay, I guess maybe then, Sean, to you, you know, your question about you know using it as a field. Where are we on our study with the school on all of the availability available uh, athletic fields? Has that started yet? My understanding is what we were going to use the one that we commissioned back in 2014, which kind of laid out. I think it was 2014 that kind of laid out what the community needs were. We had a community survey. Uh, maybe uh, Mike's not on the, the phone right now. He might be able, or Ken, maybe you can remember detail on it. So I think Meg, you're referring to a further study that would be jointly done with to assess program needs, what facilities city and school have, and then what specifically um, could be improved upon to meet uh, needs now and into the future. and. Um, I don't believe we're at any point of even starting that at this point. That was a project Mike had on his plate to do. Um, you'd have to ask Mike about that specifically. I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I was just well, we thinking gonna... that before we put money into the armory and you know, mm -hmm. if it's into, you know, up to sixty thousand dollars that we would have to determine what's really needed. Didn't we have that already done in 2014, or you just want an updated one? Another? It was a more, more comprehensive plan to actually engage the school district in a joint study uh, to do that. And that was on the, I think, the last two strategic goal setting uh, processes that the council had undertaken, but it had not began at this point. Okay. Thank you. All right. Was that it, Maggie? I had one more question. If you go ahead. Okay. Um, we had discussed uh, the possibility, Bruce, of using the you know the old lights that you took down on Main Street. I've had a request from a resident that they'd be interested in maybe taking one of those or purchasing one of those. Um, and I think I brought it up, and he said we could do that theoretically, and if the council agreed to it. And are they sitting out in the a yard somewhere right now, or so? All of the decorative lights, Sean, have been taken down. The ones that um, were deemed to be unsafe or unusable to be reused again, um, those were scrapped out and uh, just due to liability. I'm having um, Kennedy and Graven draft, draft up some language to um, keep, keep the city from being liable for people that purchase them from should they tip over or something so that we have a legal document for them to sign off on. Uh, don't hold me to it. I want to say there's about 30 fixtures that will be um, put up for sale at, it's called fair market price. So we're going to come up with a, a number, say that's two, $300 or something like that. Um, and then they will be uh, for sale, but they're still being sorted through and I'm still waiting for the document from um, Kennedy and Graven, but um, they will be, available and we'll advertise them at such time oh great okay thank you that was it that's a good idea hmm. oh wait i just thought of one other one. Oh, go ahead <laughs> uh, jim i was at a gathering of a, a neighborhood party um over on 12th and 12th southeast mm -hmm. um and they've been having uh there's uh stop signs on the east west side of 12th street or 12th avenue um 
but people are blowing that stop sign and i guess it's been a kind of a big uh, uh sore spot with the uh residents they almost to the point where they want to take it you know, the situation into their own hands and throw things at cars i recommended they don't do that but uh i don't know if maybe you could have one of the officers maybe kind of sit on that corner and just watch to see it apparently it sounds like it's just a few cars that are doing it but they're yeah. blowing through there and there's a lot of kids in that that those first four houses right there so yeah i will uh just put out an email for some extra patrol in that area extra okay. enforcement great thank you we can also add uh cross traffic does not stop sign we did that on uh, Chalupski south and third street and the person that called me about it said it seems like it's helping so um, that's something we can how 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 are stop signs determined to put them up and take them down in areas i have a question about that because i had somebody hit me last week too about stop signs and i said well i'll check into it before i because i don't know how how that's determined it's usually you know, part it's, of the traffic plan for a development by the by a traffic what, engineer yeah. okay because because what came up is the the intersection they come off the roundabout past the new quick trip and they're just a fly-in and by the time they're into that residential area you know they're 30 40 miles an hour that was the complaint i got and i didn't know if you know and they talked well can can a four-way stop be put there right by the right by the quick trip and the Daycare. The daycare center and that intersection. And so I didn't know. The yeah, intersection, right? So no, there's a. No, it's a through. It's the street will continue through. It's across for First Street now. Okay. Yeah, it's across yeah. now. So we had a traffic to be seat. done for that intersection, Dwayne. Um, I'm sorry. We well, had a traffic. Sorry, Dwayne, we had a traffic impact study done for that intersection. Okay. Uh, specifically, uh, Quick Trips engineer did the study and then we had SEH review that and they looked at all the traffic control methods in the area and it was not determined to um, need any change in traffic control, at least with the projected traffic from Quick Trip and um, the development that was to be anticipated out of that area. So. You know, we, we certainly can look at that again, but like uh, police chief said, generally speaking, we would want to defer that to a traffic engineer to, to take a look yeah. at it. And, and, I, and I'm assuming it's because of the, the highway construction. People are taking a different avenue to buzz over to, um, what is that? I'm trying to think now, um, fourth? Yep. You know, buzz down to fourth, and then they come up to get on to, you know, so, to bypass all that. So I actually did a uh, kind of a covert traffic study um, with our radar traffic recorder for speed and uh, volume. I actually did it last year under the um, detour, and we did see increased speed and traffic on uh, Chalupski North to fourth there, um, and that was even with COVID traffic uh, mm -hmm. implications being down. Um, I actually could probably get that out there again. And Jim, I don't remember, did you ever put the traffic trailer or the counter trailer up there? I, I don't believe we did. Um, it's out on 5th Southeast right now. I saw um, that. Yeah, we can move it up there uh, in a week or two. That'd be great. Just uh, just because uh, I, I just didn't know the process and I'm just asking because of, not gonna go and say something and then have it all blow up and then we can't do nothing um, but i think sean okay. you brought it up last year if i remember right yeah i think someone that uh, yep. lives down the street from bruce there on chalupski yep yep, yep. but i think that traffic uh, that speed wagon really didn't show that they were speeding Right? Isn't that what I remember, Ken? I thought you told me. Slight, it was hey, how are you? minimal, if anything. But yeah. there was an increase in traffic, but the speeding wasn't necessarily uh, a big increase. 
So I'll tell you, a car, a car going 30 miles an hour at the, uh, you know, 32 or something in a 30 mile an hour zone, that's moving. That really is moving. And I can see where people think that. I think they it's, are a bike. I think it's kind of a double edged sword sometimes because you put that out there and then they you educate people that you can go 30 miles an hour. And a lot of people don't go 30 miles an hour, but they will start going 30 miles an hour if you put a sign out there that says that. So it's kind of a, in my mind, a little tricky situation. And Jim, the, the traffic trailer isn't working on on uh, Fifth Street. When oh, I drove by it, it, yeah, when I drove by it, it only goes up to 99. <laughs> yeah, it's just a two digit readout. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so far it's working. Then. Okay. <laughs> Don't put that in the paper, Patrick. <laughs> Uh, is well, there any with, other? That, with that comedy, we should just adjourn right now and get out and just leave us all. <laughs> <in the days. laughs> Dwayne, I got yeah, one. Go thing. ahead, Ken. Yes. So, real quick, I want to give you guys an update on the uh, council chamber uh, work. Hopefully, you can see my screen here. Oh, nice. So, this was when they were kind of in process of, I don't know how much feet of cables had to go throughout the council room, but it was a lot, it was very extensive, but this just gives you a little picture of kind of right in the middle of their uh, wiring that they were doing up there with all the new microphones, new speakers, new uh, everything up there. So that was kind of a mess, but they did get mostly wrapped up by the end of last week. Um, this is our new control um, station in the back of the room. We do still need somebody to operate the cameras and you know hit record and all that similar to what Mitch did before but this really consolidates it all into one thing cuts down on the processing um, that type of thing but um, this is a look from the uh, council dais and you can see uh, you guys in the council will have a view of a uh, monitor directly in front of you and then there's one on each side of the room very visible from basically anywhere. And then um, the other thing you can do is if you wanted to bring your own laptop, you could watch the live stream of the council meeting if you wanted to. Um, they do find some cities um, that have purchased this uh, system, some council members do do that as well. Um, but you have everything in front of you anyway. But what I wanted to get to was, I'm hoping we can do a um, soft, a test of the equipment. Um, if people are comfortable, if you'd like to be in person, probably on that first meeting in May. I don't want to fully go to that yet. We'll do some testing here in the next week. Um, the biggest thing we got to get wrapped up yet is configuration on our live streaming to our YouTube channel. Uh, other than that, we're going to continue to use GoToMeeting for outside consultants, but by and large, people that want to just watch the meeting um, will go to our YouTube channel and, and watch wow. live there so we've just got some testing and training to do um, between now and that first meeting in May but uh, so far it works really well and uh, just a little bit of a learning curve on the front end and I'm not gonna be able to run it while we do the meeting so again we got to find somebody to, to operate that whether that's Mitch or maybe a high school student from a, a IT class I don't know but um, it's it's gonna be a really nice product for us I think Oh, nice. Ken, can they put that on Bevcom uh, public access then too, or? You know, that's been kind of the issue. Um, if we could get it to, and I forget if uh, the school district can still put that out there. Um, we do have it in a format we, we could. I'm not sure how the school is able to do that at this point, but um, if they still have the equipment to do it, we can put it on there. I just will have to follow up with, with uh, Mitch on that. Neat. So more more to come, but I think we'll at least be able to get some people back in person if you're wanting to give it a run on that May 4th meeting. And then uh, socially distanced um, seating in the audience there too. So look like we could accommodate very comfortably nine in the audience and 
generally speaking, we don't get much more than that. So I think we're on our way to finally uh, get back a little more to normal here. Cool. So we could be online and, and in person, uh, council members? Yes. So if you did not want to attend a meeting uh, or couldn't for whatever medical reason, we could accommodate both, yes. Cool. So Very that's all I can give you a quick update. You're saying it has to be a medical reason, Ken? Well, no. that's kind of the talk for the, the updating of the state statute. Uh, from what I had read from the league today, but oh, that hasn't changed formally yet. While we're still in COVID and it's still in the uh, emergency uh, order from the governor, it's it could be for any reason basically uh, through the pandemic yet at this point. I'm just talking longer term. Under the open meeting law. Correct. Okay. I don't I don't know if it would qualify, Bruce, that you just don't want to drive from up north. <laughs> well, I'm starting to have a stomach ache. It's going to be a while, I think. <laughs> Get that medical condition. Your doctor might write you a note. Yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay, anything else? Otherwise, I would take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Second. Come on, Rick, go ahead. Second. <laughs> second. Okay, motion's been made to adjourn. Second. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. It was a good meeting. Aye. Good night. Good night.